I am feeling like there's a big door that's ready to open. <laughs> and I'm going to open it. I feel like I've been in a dark room stumbling around looking for something and not knowing there was a door. It, this is something that I'm going to um, reflect on because I know that I can't continue without that door. I am determined to deal with things that I have not dealt with well in, in my past. I feel like this is just going to help all that. We are more than our thoughts. Our mind is more than our thoughts. When we stand in that space between thoughts, when our mind is in that state, it's saying, I'm open to learning something new. And then I hear something. Something emerges from the nothing. Something emerges from nothing. We witness something come to mind where nothing was there before. Except in the body, in feelings, your true self freedom. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to see you. I've been thinking about you all week and can hardly wait to hear what you discovered, what you did um, as you explored cosmic consciousness, your true self. Hello, everyone. I'll go first. Um, the homework assignment, as I understood it, and as we went over it, and I think I got it. <laughs> it was to um, allow the mind to hold a thought about negative one, and then the mind would release that and take on the thought of, neg of positive one. And I was to explore um, the space between those two thoughts without feeling, but with just to be in wonder or curious about what that space was. So for me, um, it was swirly, if I could describe it that way, swirly. It wasn't a straight line between, um, from the negative to the positive. It had movement actual movement, not just a zoom of a movement. It was more graceful, a graceful movement, I'd like to say. And I felt that I was a part of that movement. It wasn't something outside of me. It was something that I was observing and participating in, participating in. Um, to me, it was um, energetic. It had some energy to it. It was mystical and it was vibrational. So swirly and maybe like you would see a voice meter or, you know, in a, a sound studio, sometimes if you look at the, the soundboard, you can watch the little numbers go up and down. It had that quality to it as well. Um, I named that movement. <laughs> I, I, went, I was bold. I said, um, this movement is alive. It's non-physical life. Um, it was inviting. It was safe and it was expandable. So I could hold it or pause it before I went to positive one. I could stretch it, maybe like bubble gum or Gumby. Remember our Gumby toys? Um, it was a doorway and it was a, also, I wrote down that it was a threshold. So 
both of those were important um, passages or crossing points to enter into it deeper than to just observe it or be curious about it from a distance. I didn't think that was very easy to do. I wanted to engage with it. Um, I think that's all I want to share right now. I, I was thinking about it when I was driving one day and I, I looked up and I saw an airplane and I thought, well, what if I thought of like the airplane and then my car and then I was able to be in the airplane just like I'd been many times before in that um, flight pattern to land at the airport. It was it was landing at an airport that's near nearby. And then I was in my car and I was in the airplane and I was in between and I was, it was so strange. I felt like in two places at once and everywhere. And, um, and then I thought, wow, I better drive. <laughs> and this is not safe <laughs> to be everywhere. I need to be in my car driving, but, um, but it was very, very short. And, um, and then that, that was the only time I had that experience. And that was early, early in the week. I was walking the dog for a long time, and all I thought about was the waves going in and the waves going out. And so I stood there with the dog for a very long time and just, and I love that space in between where the water is very thin and then the water starts to both sink into the sand, but also recede and the sand gets dry and then the water comes in again. Wonderful. I will lift up a few of the words that Maggie used energized, vibrational, mystical, non-physical life, passageway, doorway, threshold. And then Kat said, everywhere at once. which is akin to non-physical life. And Teresa said, with the waves going in and out, there was that moment for a moment. Now, when you focus on the space between two thoughts, no thought is present. It's not thinking. It's, it's awareness without a thought. That's the state we're exploring. At every single moment of your life, you are going through that space, that movement, that doorway. You are in a state awaiting a revelation. So pause, discern, reflect from the standpoint of the mind. Your mind is empty of thought, which gives your emotions the space to reveal something. Like me not being angry with my brother, but with my parents. because your mind isn't thinking. It still has the capacity to think, but it's awaiting something. And to the extent that we do that, we begin to see that we are more than our thoughts. Our mind is more than our thoughts. It's the very capacity to think, which is awesome. When we stand in that space between thoughts, when our mind is in that state, it's saying, I'm open to learning something new, which is a struggle. 
it's an absolute struggle because at least for me, I'm saying, okay, there are things I probably don't want to know, but if I'm in the space, my body's going to tell me stuff that I've set aside. It's as if I'm standing in front of a burning bush. I have nothing to say. I'm speechless. I, no thoughts. State of awe. And then I hear something. Something emerges from the nothing. Something emerges from nothing. We witness something come to mind where nothing was there before. Except in the body, in feelings. I once had a um, therapist, and because I was raised in such a happy family, <laughs> I always smiled. <laughs> Early on, she said, okay, today we're going to work on anger. I said, sure. And she was a body therapist. You had to physically stand place. So she, she stood in front of me and she did this. But she was standing up, right? So she was going down like this, just like that. And she said, do this. And she was standing right in front of me. And she said, do this. And I said, I can't do that. And she said, sure you can, just do this. Right? And she was standing up and so she was jabbing at the ground. And so I said, I can't do that. And she kept on doing that. She said, just, just do this. And within a minute, I started crying. I fell to the ground and I said, don't make me do this. Don't make me do this. I don't trust anyone in the world. I knew I trusted very few people, but I had no idea I didn't trust anyone. That's what gets revealed in the space. Um. Thank you um, for sharing that, but also because I felt like um, this homework was so overwhelming and I felt like I was failing at it, but I have had more revelations in the last week than I've had in the previous 10 years. Just things about my marriage and about myself and about my parenting and all of this. And it's just been crazy. I mean, like literally crazy, you know, not crazy, like we use crazy, but it's been amazing. It's been full of awe. And I now recognize that it was because I was practicing on, you know, quieting the monkey mind or whatever. I realized that it was because I was doing this other work. I feel like this is one of those things that you you helped us or helped me at least be in this space of having these kind of revelatory moments. My uh, therapist and I have been doing some really good work lately too. Um, she can... help me see things that she doesn't know of course but she like points me toward the space we need to name it <laughs> i want to call it home <laughs> like et home um ground zero right um no, that's the true. The true self. You were now in the space of your freedom.
your true self freedom. Yeah, yes. Yes. The true oh, self. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've often since we've been working together, I often thought about your revelation about your brother. Um I grew up in a very large, unhappy family as well. And I have siblings that have that their lives came to an end before I got to that place where I could cry. Um, one by suicide, one by heart attack. Um, another brother, a third brother that's died, I spent a lot of time with talking about everything before he left. But that space is still there for me to work on the things like the space of my, the things I experienced with this brother that was so mean to me. Um, I can still do that work because I think there's a characteristic to this space that it's outside of time. It's um, if that makes sense. Yeah. That we can enter it and we can be, I, I can be my five-year-old self that's crying for someone to care. And I can hold her and care about her. I'm thinking about the different ways that um, that we can have these experiences. And, and I, I think when I'm writing poetry, I think it's one of them. Uh, most of my poetry, probably 90% is um, usually about grief or feelings that I have, that, and that's how I work through them. But I always start a poem with this intention of what it's going to be and what I want to write. And inevitably, different words want to come through. And I learned that if I don't fight them, that I learn something. And when I'm finished with the poem, I'm always surprised. I'm like, wow, do I feel that? Yeah, I feel that. Revelatory moments. Outside time. A different dimensionality in which nothing becomes something. Nothing reveals something. The empty mind reveals, witnesses something being created that it did not produce. Every single moment of our lives, that space is present because it's the space between two thoughts, the space between an inhalation and an exhalation, the space between two sensations, that no thing out of which creation, revelation emerges. And it says, simple, quote unquote, is focusing on the intersection between your thumb, your finger, your index finger on the back of your hand, the back of your hand and the intersection between the two. Or focusing your mind on one thought and then slowly moving to the second thought and the movement takes place between the two thoughts. So it functions like zero. Null, the null point of consciousness, as Schleiermacher would say. The body is filled to overflowing with the natal hour of everything living in religion, the infinite finite universe and the finite moment of one's life. So the body is just euphoric, filled with feelings. Empty mind witnesses that. 
And out of that infinite feeling, that infinite being, that presence of the universe itself, that movement, something emerges. as the next thought unfolds. So it's paradoxical, like nothing is, because you are witnessing a moment of creation, of something that has been trying to get your attention for a very long time. The more you do it, the more do you gain control over what you are thinking about. You can say to your thoughts, okay, that's it for now. Just clear space, thank you. As one of you said last week, I wish I could just switch a, flip a switch. You can. When you do this exercise often enough, you find a muscle, if you will, I can say, okay, enough of that. And now you are simply purely aware. And like the two fists going down, all the hidden knowledge <laughs> that your brain and body want you to know to protect you and love you will show up. <laughs> 